Hello and welcome to the channel! You don't know me yet, but you'll soon find out that I'm not really into the boring normal size stuff that you see around us. I'm more into the really small stuff, like particles and molecules, and sometimes for example, today I venture out of my physicist comfort zone into the microorganism world. I'm also quite interested in the really big stuff, like planets, stars, nebulae, and galaxies. But today we are going small. The victim of today's surprisingly ethical exploration is going to be my aquarium. I'd really like to find out if my fish is the only thing that passes the living and moving test, or if there are some more interesting organisms I could look at under the microscope. I have to say, I've been looking at my fish for long enough, and it's starting to bore me a bit. So I've decided to get some uh, samples from my aquarium, and we're going to look at them under the microscope. I'm going to start with getting a bit of algae from the aquarium, just a few strands of it. And here it is. Then I also took some amount of aquarium water. I really hope something is alive and moving here. I am taking a smallish sample of one of my plant's leaves. And the last thing I'd really like to check out is the inside of my aquarium filter. I took out the sponge from it and then squeezed it into some vial. Sample collection done. And now comes sample processing. I'm only going to show you how I did it for the algae because it's a bit too repetitive and you're going to get bored. So first I put the algae on the glass slide. Then. I added a bit of water, which would hold the cover glass. And lastly, I put the cover glass onto the slide with the algae and water. Now we're ready to put our samples under the microscope. And with the magic of CMOS camera sensors, I can show you everything I can see under the microscope. Pretty cool, right? So in order to do some kind of build up or whatever, I'm going to present the most not moving stuff first. Let's start with the more primitive and also a lot more prevalent specimen from our plant collection, the algae. We can see that it consists of quite thin strands. If we look closer, we can see that they actually consist of single cells put next to each other. Other than that, there is not that much to see. Let's move on to a bit more advanced organisms, leaves of real plants. We can see that they consist of cells stacked next to each other, a bit like a puzzle. If you look closer, you can recognize individual chloroplasts inside all of the plant cells. These are responsible for the whole process of photosynthesis. And here we can see the first moving inhabitant. The scene reminds me of the Pac-Man game. Of course, the pre-release version. Okay, I really hope that the water I squeezed out of the filter is alive. And it definitely is. Here is the first micro-inhabitant. It's probably some kind of a flatworm, but I'm not entirely sure, because it moves a bit like a leech with suckers at the end of its body. And there is not only one. I was able to find around 10 of them while I was searching under the microscope. So, let's take a closer look at you. Its movement technique is actually really impressive. These creatures are transparent, so we can see right into their guts. I don't think I'd like that. My sister could find out that I ate some of her candy and that would have some really not nice consequences. We can see that its body consists of several segments and it seems to have a pair of antennae on one of its ends. So this is how the government spies on us. Ugh, not touching that! Your sadness is giving me depression. I don't even know you! Reaching the meeting point. Or not? No. Probably wasn't attractive enough. I wonder what their criteria for attraction are. And here we can see its suckers in their full glory. This is what walking on a glass looks like.
The second inhabitant was this aquatic roundworm. It is most likely a member of the nematode species. And it is not alone too, I found around three of them. When I speed up the footage, the roundworm reminds me of an aircraft marshaller. And here the candy issue returns. People, transparency is not that cool. When the microorganism is dead, we can enjoy its transparency to the full extent. Is this considered as a privacy violation? Don't sue me, little worm, please. I also found some really interesting ciliates, which are microorganisms that use little hair called cilia to paddle through water. They need them because at their size, water acts like really thick syrup and conventional swimming just doesn't work. The one we are looking at right now is a member of the Euplodes genus. By refocusing a bit, we can resolve all of its microorgans. It looks like micro-robotic vacuum, which drank too much coffee. And guess what? It's transparent! Again! And here's another ciliate. Its cilia itself is not very visible, because it is very thin. The specimen seems to really like spinning. One of my packs also really likes spinning. She probably drank some of the aquarium water when she was a puppy. Maybe her love of spinning is due to an extraordinary abundance of these microorganisms in her body? This would explain everything. And now try to guess. I'll give you a hint. It's the world's best racer. And you guessed right. It's the plain old, too abundant and annoying aquarium snail. And it's full of surprises. Did you notice the location of its heart? This Fibonacci guy totally changes the meaning of the phrase my heart beats for you. By the way, I think that I found the reason for the transparency of those microorganisms. It is that they are afraid of autopsies, so they became transparent in order to allow us to explore them without cutting them open. Evolution at its finest. I have to say that the sample was surprisingly diverse and it definitely passed the living and moving test. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe and see you later. I'm going to wash my hands right now. I hope that there aren't any microorganisms in tap water. We can look at that in a future video. Bye!